Welcome back fitness fans, it's Igor from Vitruvian Physique. I got another informational video for you guys. See, I told you it's not just going to be vlogs all day, we are still going to keep on learning something. Uh, today's a great uh, topic, this is pointed out in one of my comments, it's how much protein do athletes and specifically bodybuilders really need? Uh, we've all heard uh, the recommended one gram of protein per pound of body weight, but I decided to go a little bit into the research and see is that true and if so why is that the case uh, this video took a pretty good amount of research luckily I found one great scientific article which led to several other scientific articles uh, so yeah this definitely took a bit of research but you know what guys it's worth it but you know you can pay me back if you know what I mean click the button click it Okay, but getting back on track, what is the recommended amount of protein for regular people? I'm talking about, you know, 98, 99% of the population. Uh, these are not hardcore training athletes and definitely not um, power lifters or bodybuilders. Well, the answer actually is 0.80 uh, grams of protein per kilogram of body weight according to Health Canada, which is not much at all. For a person my size currently weighing uh, 174 pounds or 79 kilograms, that would equate to only 63 grams of protein and we all know that's nothing. I mean, I can get that in one meal, let alone a day. On the other hand, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, or the NSCA, recommends up to 0.4 to 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight uh, for physically active individuals, and up to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight for very competitive athletes. Uh, but the interesting thing is that's probably the second highest echelon um, of protein requiring uh, physical activity or athletes that we can get because we all know that nothing requires protein as much as consistently uh, tearing down your muscles, rebuilding them. I'm talking powerlifting, bodybuilding, and in general hypertrophy. Okay, so let's get into our first article uh, concerning resistance training athletes, which is pretty much just a fancy way of saying you know, bodybuilders. Hi there, I'm a resistance athlete, which means I'm well versed in resistance training to elicit maximal hypertrophic responses resulting in hyperbrachial radialis development via optimal amino acid absorption rate. I lift things up and put them down. Okay, so this study pretty much took individuals uh, and gave them the exact same training splits or training regimens, uh, but one group was given a lower uh, protein dose and the other one's given a higher protein dose. Uh, but before we get into actually, you know, what the results were, you have to see how we were able to measure it. Because these studies, you know, you can't really track someone, you know, track their gains, you know, uh, their increases in lean body mass or, or strength as easily as one may think. Otherwise, that would take a long time. And it's very, you know, convoluted because you're going to have factors like genetics or training intensity. I mean, how could you 100% ensure that person A has the exact same genetics and works exactly as hard as person B? Uh, so what they actually looked at is nitrogen levels. First of all, what proteins are at their core is kind of like long chains of puzzle pieces, and these puzzle pieces are amino acids. That's why, you know, things like branch chain amino acids pretty much provide the building blocks uh, for your body to synthesize uh, proteins. And what those amino acids actually have is nitrogen or amino groups. Um, this is completely safe in, in case any of you are freaking out because you hear the word nitrogen, you think like, oh my God, it's like ammonia gas or something. It's fine. Uh, nitrogen is found in absolutely everything. It's in the food we eat. It's in the air we breathe. I think, you know, air itself and the environment has like 76% nitrogen or something. So it's, it's fine. So since nitrogen is found in amino acids and therefore protein, um, the guys in the study were pretty much able to see how much, you know, nitrogen your body expels versus how much nitrogen it intakes. If the excretion and intake rates are the same, you end up with a nitrogen balance of zero, which is pretty much the bare minimum that you need to keep yourself out of a catabolic state. Um, essentially, you want uh, the, the nitrogen level to be uh, higher than the excretion level. That way, technically, you are in an anabolic state. But I want to mention that having a nitrogen balance of zero in this case is absolutely the bare minimum. That is absolutely not enough uh, for hypertrophy and for growth and uh, for you know, effective uh, strength and size gains. So this study found that 97.5% of the population will be completely okay and in a nitrogen balance of zero uh, with 0 0.8 uh, grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That's not pound, that's very low. But again, these people, they don't really have uh, that requirement, uh, the same that you know, athletes or bodybuilders would have. So the two groups were A, uh, 1.26 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is a lot. That's actually pretty good for a bodybuilder. 
and 0.48 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is absolutely nothing. That's pretty much, you know, baseline levels for regular Joe Schmoes. The study found that after training, the high group was, you know, they're fine, but the low protein group actually had a negative nitrogen balance, meaning that not only are they not making gains, they're probably losing gains. And then using linear regression analysis, which is pretty much just a fancy way of saying, you know, they looked at data points and drew a line, um, they discovered that 0.55 grams per pound of body weight uh, for this group would be the absolute bare minimum to be in a nitrogen balance of zero. And again, that doesn't mean they're okay. That means that, you know, basically they're not catabolic, but they're not making no gains. The study couldn't find any changes in lean body mass between the two groups, but the problem is, like I said, I mean, the study was only done over 10 days, which is nowhere near enough time uh, to actually see differences in physical development. If they did a study for like six or eight months or something, yeah, maybe they would, but who's got the time and money for that? Looking at another article, because again, the more articles and the more sample data we get, uh, the closer we can get to the actual uh, you know, desired protein intake level. A negative nitrogen balance was seen in a group given 0.61 grams of protein per pound of body weight, whereas a positive balance was seen at uh, 1.15 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So unlike the last uh, study, we have kind of closed the gap. You know, they increased protein for the lower group, but it still wasn't enough. The higher group was a little bit lower protein. So we're starting to close that gap in the middle. We're, pin we're about to pinpoint what is the actual desired level. A third study actually decided to take a different approach and instead of looking at nitrogen balance, actually looked at strength gains, mainly in the squat and bench press, and found that in a higher protein group, uh, not surprisingly, uh, they noticed uh, significant strength gains. Another study actually decided to take an additional approach and they actually factored in uh, energy intake or calories in addition to just protein and nitrogen balance. And they found that for a 90 kilogram man, which is 200 pounds, uh, taking in 2,700 calories per day, which is pretty much maintenance for a guy that size, um, he would need 123 grams of protein to achieve a nitrogen balance of zero. So again, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight just to get zero, which is the absolute bare minimum. Another study actually decided to take a different approach and have three groups of protein uh, intake, uh, low, medium, and high. And it found that protein synthesis was dramatically increased going from the low to medium group, but between the medium to high group, uh, the jump was nowhere near as dramatic. Although there was, you know, obviously a jump. This same study suggested 0.82 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So we are starting to get really high up there. Uh, finally, I'm going to throw up uh, a little graphic. This is uh, pretty much an, an aggregation of several studies uh, and their recommended protein intake levels uh, for athletes. But once again, bodybuilders and powerlifters going for you know size and strength gain specifically probably would have wanted to be at the very high end of all of these ranges and perhaps even taking it a little bit further. Okay, guys, to summarize, what does this all mean? You know, it could get a bit confusing because I'm throwing so many numbers and so many articles at you. Uh, I'm gonna combine it with the research I have done and with my own personal experience. I believe there are four different categories. Number one, under 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. I believe this is insufficient for, uh, you know, anybody who is actually serious about athletics. If you're a regular Joe Schmo, then you're fine. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but I believe 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight, which is the second group, um, is barely sufficient uh, if you, you know, you're not necessarily trying to get bigger or, you know, overly stronger, uh, you're more into, you know, athletics, you know, you play hockey, you play basketball, I think that you know, 0.8 grams would be a you know, pretty good uh, amount to go for. But for bodybuilders and for powerlifters, I believe this is the key amount, one gram of protein per pound of body weight. We've all heard it before, and it turns out the science backs it up. So if you've been doing it all along, great, keep it going, you're fine. I believe this is the perfect amount for gains. If you're trying to get bigger, trying to get stronger, uh, this would be a good amount. And it doesn't go overboard, leaving you uh, the ability to you know, put your food intake into better foods, because normally people don't really like protein. I mean, all that chicken breast and fish, I'd much rather eat you know, other carby or fatty foods. Um, but this is not the case in group number four, um, which is cutting. I believe that for cutting, um, one gram of protein per pound of body weight is still okay, but there's nothing wrong, and in some ways recommended to go a little bit higher to 1.1, 1.2, you know, even one point, hell, go up to 1.5 if you want, um, grams of protein per pound of body weight. The reason being that if you were to just do one gram of protein, um, you would have um, additional calories left over, which you would probably end up putting into fat and carbohydrates. And like we all know, when you're dieting, you can't necessarily eat that many carbohydrates uh, or that much fat because it's going to make weight loss a little bit more difficult from, uh, you know, and if it fits your macro standpoint. So in that case, I'd rather you cut the carbs uh, back a little bit 
and uh, increased protein because like we all know protein is not that great of an energy source it's much better used for muscle and protein synthesis that way this would help you get you know pretty lean actually guys I want to talk about a fifth group uh, this is a very weird one this is beyond 1.5 grams of protein uh, per pound of body weight this is crazy stuff pretty much is there a maximum level of protein not many people you know like eating protein this much but for those of you who do, you just can't get enough and you're wondering, can I eat 300 grams of protein? The answer is yes. Um, in fact, the Food and Nutrition Board, the FNB, actually has no um, you know, tolerable daily upper limit uh, because according to the research, um, they were not able to establish a maximum uh, value at which point adverse health effects would you know, occur. So for all you guys that love protein out there, Keep going, more power to you. Personally, I wouldn't go that high, especially you're gonna get start getting weird. You know, I mean, this might sound like a little bit of bro science, but let's be honest, we've all had, you know, the protein farts and the protein bloat, and, you know, there's just some stuff that's not necessarily that great uh, attributed to ex overly high protein intake levels. Plus, you know, how are you gonna get that? Are you gonna be having whey protein all day, every day? That's like five shakes. I mean, how much milk and whey can you actually take? So that's it guys, it turns out that one gram of protein per pound of body weight, the age old magical bodybuilding uh, value stands up to the research and it stands up to the science. All the science. All the science that I spent hours researching for you guys. Do it! Just do it! Make your dreams come true!